you all come back from that break so if you just tune in you are still watching the national platform right here on omi television we are streaming live on facebook at omi tv official so the president of the ghana hemp association nana kukwajman has joined me i know most of you know him to be a sports journalist but he will explain things further for you to know him today nana you're welcome thank you very much my brother where have you been i'm here i'm here in ghana Okay. Yeah, I mean, Have you abandoned sports journalism? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely not. Uh, okay. That's not the case. Yeah. Um, but you still have to feed yourself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Does it mean journalism doesn't feed? <laughs> it, it doesn't at the moment. And, okay. and with the way it's deteriorating as well, mm. you know, yeah. um, it doesn't make it appealing okay. um, to a certain extent. And, and of course, there you have some stages uh, when you are saying certain things and everyone is dismissing it you have to leave people to to find their fate and mm -hmm. you know we did really with all what happened with anas um, fate okay. fate came knocking at the door and so all the previous concerns that were ignored before and people being branded as haters and things like that you know, the chickens came home to roost, uh, and really there was something there sure. um, that we couldn't all put our finger on. So that's resulted in what over a year and a half of no football, and we're so unlucky that we've walked into a situation Same. just when we started yeah. that we're now back to a period of no football. Mm. Um, but you still do the punditry work. Well, I yes, if, I, if I'm called and I produce, I, I produce a radio program, yeah. uh, a 30 minute radio program on A1 radio A1. up in uh, Bolgatanga. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's pre presented by uh, a lady called Humo. I'm sure you, may, yeah, yeah, you may know her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So okay. I do that every day. Oh. Um, so I'm still, still quite active. How is the production done since you are in Accra? Oh, but come on! I mean, uh, yeah. It's, so how are you? Are. How are you streaming live on Facebook? <laughs> anyway, I, I get you, but sometimes your physical presence is needed. Anyway. Uh, no, we work it out quite well between myself and Humo. We've okay. we've learned because it's it's not. We've been doing it for now a couple mm. of years now. Mm. So over the time, you have your hitches and your ups and downs, mm. and I think we've resolved these things uh, very well. So although I'm not there. Um, she she still She's can go working. ahead and, and and deliver the show, okay. and more often than not, she calls me on the show anyway. So um, it's working quite well. It's okay. Okay, so let's let's zoom into why you are here today. Um, how did you become the president of the Hemp Association of Ghana? Um, well, basically, it's um, it's a story that kind of begins about four years ago, and okay. probably even more. Okay, uh, but that was much more informal. Uh, we uh, we um, we started getting involved with the the discussion about changing the bill. Um, there's a parliamentary select committee that you had to attend, and there were various other government agencies we were speaking to about it, like Food and Drugs, mm -hmm. Ghana Standards, etc., uh, etc. Et okay. And um, with what was happening at the parliamentary level, it was becoming clear that what they need was a groundswell of positive opinion mm. coming from the public and, and other civil society organizations that would help them to push this bill through. So uh, we basic, basically formalized the process, registered the association and started to push a positive narrative out there about cannabis uh, so that everybody could see and everybody could judge for themselves. Of course you've got people who are totally against it and I believe because they're misinformed, to be perfectly honest with you, because um, there's nothing wrong with the cannabis yeah. plant at all, mm. nothing at all. Yeah. But they've been misinformed, and we have been misinformed for years as yes. well. The general public of Ghana still remains misinformed, and, and we still have to go to all the regions to hemp educate them about the whole thing. Because hemp educate. Hemp educate. I like that. I yeah, like because, that. you know, when we talk about Indian hemp, yeah we tend to get the terms mixed up yeah, because yeah. hemp is something that you don't smoke. It's for industrial purposes yeah. and medicinal purposes. Yeah. But if we talk about hemp, we believe we're talking about uh, the, 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 you know, the 
the, the material that you smoke, as you okay. say, marijuana. Okay. Okay. Oh, we say weed, some say ganja, sure. you know, there's lots of different names. I want you to actually give us the distinction. I, I will. So, sure. so we get a bit confused. Mm. As soon as we heard, hear the word hemp, hands on our head, mm. it's all about smoking. People are walking up and down the street semi-naked and, and they're mad because mm. of this. It's all a fallacy. It, none of it is true. Mm. You know, in Ghana, 2.5 million people smoke cannabis every day and the fact of the matter is while society would point at the Rastafarians and say they're the ones smoking it it's not true because we don't even have 50,000 Rastafarians in Ghana okay. yet 2.5 million yeah. are smoking how did you it. arrive at that uh, figure what the 50,000 and then the 2.5 oh million. It's, it's research it's out there it's on the it's on mm. the net it's mm. on there's mm. a league there's a league table Ghana is amongst sure. the top three sure consumers of cannabis. Okay, so yes. I'm mm. not just making it up. Sure, sure. 2.5 million people then smoke 50, cannabis. Uh, no, well, there's definitely not 50,000 <laughs> anyway, Rastafarians anyway, in Ghana. Anyway. Come on. Yeah, I get definitely you. not. Sure. So, so who's smoking the cannabis? <laughs> <laughs> so since, you know, it's not the Rastafarians, who, who's smoking the cannabis? Yeah, anyway. Well, I can tell you who's smoking the cannabis. Cause you look like a cannabis smoker. And, and the, the rest of the people here who are in the studio, you all look like typical cannabis smokers. smokers. Because that, and no disrespect to anyone, mm. because when you consider the figures and the fact that you only have, we'll say you only do have mm. 50,000 mm. Rastafarians in Ghana, then you're still left with 2.x X million. <laughs> so everybody's a potential <laughs> you understand what I'm part saying of the 2.5 million. Yeah, so since it's not the Rastafarians, it mm. must be those who don't look like Rastafarians and essentially those who don't look Rastafari like Rastafarians comb their hair mm. because that's the look we're talking about. So all you people going up and down with your, your nice combed hairs, going to, your, going to your chamber if you're a judge, going to the you know, your parliament. your parliament, the bar or whatever. Yeah, these are the people who are smoking it. Okay. These are the people who are smoking mm. it. So, but having said that, it's, but it's not bad anyway, mm. because those people are not mad. No. You know, they're, they're leading in our country. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not mad at all. So the issue about Some of them. psychosis is, is not true. Okay. It's not true, because if we have 2.5 million people smoking, you go to the various psychiatric wards, how many people do you find there who are there specifically because they smoke cannabis? Mm. How many people do you think you'll find there? Mm. Yeah, probably not even a thousand, mm. if that. You just go across the country, yet you have learned people putting this type of propaganda out mm. and causing fear and panic, panic yeah. amongst the community who don't know anything about cannabis. Mm. This is what they hear. So mm. we need to dispel those things with, with the truth. Okay. Cannabis is good for me, it's good for you, it's good for our country, it's okay. good for our nation. Mm. It can help build infrastructure in our nation. Mm. You were talking about the uh, the distinction between the two. Yeah. The the Cannabis sativa L, yeah? yeah, it's part of the family. Then you have cannabis indica, mm -hmm. yeah. Now cannabis uh, sativa L on the one hand is for industrial use. It grows uh, like 16 feet tall, almost. Mm -hmm. You know, very tall, and it's it's slender. Yeah, it doesn't produce the buds that you can pick and roll them up in a joint and smoke them. Mm. It doesn't produce that. The buds it produces carry seeds. Yeah? And those seeds, you can, you can extract the oil from those seeds. Those, those seeds are very, very nutritious. You can extract the oil from those seeds to make uh, various medic medication for antidepression, for example, mm. high blood pres pressure, mm. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, autism, epilepsy. Okay. You know, and the likes. Is there's a whole host of uh, medications that can be produced from from industrial hemp. On the other hand, of the industrial hemp, uh, you can build this studio. You can build every property out of hemp by mm -hmm. mixing the hemp shiv and the hemp herd with lime and clay. Mm -hmm. You can make the same blocks that you see the people who are building blocks outside mm -hmm. make and they make a stronger building. 
than what we have now. Mm. It can also make all the furniture and everything you have in the room, your clothes, cosmetics, absolutely everything. There's over 50,000 uses mm. for hemp, 50, over 50,000. Now, on the other hand, cannabis indica, that also has great medicinal potential. Mm. In fact, it's much stronger than the CBD. Okay. Yeah, it, and you can combine it, and that makes it much more potent. Mm. Now, obviously, the, the indica has a higher THC level, which is tetrahydrocannabinol. And that is the, the content that, if you smoke it, makes you feel high, mm. makes you feel good. Um, so uh, it's got the medicinal compounds oh. in it. And the tree only grows to about six feet tall, or seven six foot the most, feet. six okay. feet tall. But it grows out wide. Okay. And it produces the buds that you can extract the oils from to make the medicine. Mm. And you can also go through a drying process with it and crumble it up and, and, and mm. smoke it. Yeah? Mm. So basically, the law is speaking about industrial hemp. It's not talking about marijuana because the headlines were misleading for everyone. It okay. was saying, oh, uh, you know, Parliament has legalized cannabis yeah, and, yeah. you know, yeah. all these kind of things. It, it's mm. not the case. Yeah, they've sure. legalized uh, or decriminalized cannabis sativa. That's mm. what they've done. Oh, okay. And the uses of cannabis sativa is as I've just explained to you. Okay. So there are medicinal properties and it can be used for industry. In fact, it, we're, on, we're on the verge of an industrial revolution if we really pick this up because I've said it to the government time and time again that um, if you really want to embrace one district, one factory, the way forward is through hemp, uh, I'm telling you, because mm. even the textile industry, we've got a lot of problems with the textile industry and, and we can't pay because the, pr the price of production is quite high. Now, do you know if you grow... Uh, industrial hemp, you, you can make the fabrics that is required to make your shirt, your trousers, or, yeah. or whatever, and it's significantly much more cheaper. So uh, I want us to know that we're on the verge of an industrial revolution here, uh, and it's very serious. It's something that can stop our leaders from flying across the country with their cap in their hand, yeah. asking for people to give donations in order to run our country. Yeah. Do you understand? So it's very important that people understand that. Um, I'm not here to propagate any falsehood. I'm, I'm here to tell people exactly what's going on. The examples are quite clear at the rest of the world, Canada, America, Holland, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's too well known yeah. what is happening in the west of the world but we seem to catch on last all the time. But that's not a problem. We need to catch on and we need to embrace this and understand that this is a pivotal moment for us as Ghanaians. Um, okay. and, and, and understand that it's an industrial revolution that we shouldn't allow to pass us by. Okay, so you told me you got involved almost, I think four years ago. So I want to believe you've been working behind the scenes to help this come to a realization. What did you really do to convince Parliament as a group for this to be decriminalized? Well, it's the narrative, having mm. a clear and consistent narrative. Um, you've obviously got to spend a lot of time doing research. Um, and we write, we produce uh, a column every week mm. that talks about the benefits of cannabis, whatever it may be. So that was a consistent narrative that we fed through to the Parliamentary Select Committee um, about the benefits of uh, cannabis for Ghanaians, for all of us as Ghanaians. And I think that is something that was very significant because no one else in the country is writing anything about cannabis. Uh, indeed, the last uh, thing we wrote was about our scientists because okay. not only is no one writing anything about cannabis, yeah. but our scientists equally aren't researching Research. anything to do about cannabis. Meanwhile, uh, in Jamaica, you have a doctor called Dr. Lowe who has the patent on an eye drop, a cannabis-based eye drop, that, that wipes away glaucoma. Yeah. 26 states in the United States of America are now subscribed to that, and that, you know, that is on the shelves in the pharmaceutical uh, world there for people to go and, and, and get it to 
clean up glaucoma. Mm. Glaucoma is something that makes you blind. This same doctor is in the line to receive a patent, once again, uh, cannabis-based, uh, for a vaccine for COVID-19. And he's not the only one. The Israelis are also researching into a vaccine for COVID-19, which is purely cannabis-based. So I ask the question, I beg the question with all humility and respect, what are our scientists doing? Mm. Because at the moment, uh, what I hear them doing is discussing whether or not the data is correct. Um, did, we, did we test one person three times and add it as three times, or did we test the same person three times as, and add it as one? While there's other people, other scientists in the rest of the world who are really looking into things that could help their countries and help society in large. And this is the way we need to go. Yeah. Because uh, when we approached the newspapers and said uh, we would like our columns to feature columns, in yeah. there, they all said no. Yeah. Okay. Because of the thoughts all of them said and the no. myths surrounding it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, it's, so that was one way. Okay. And of course, as I say to you, we were in correspondence with the Food and Drugs Authority, the Ghana Standards Agency, Ghana Export Authority, and various other government agencies and ministries. Yeah. So that's the type of process it takes. You, you've got to be liaising with those people all the time because the fact of the matter is, is they're not the experts, they are civil servants, but, but we are the experts. Okay. Uh, do you understand? Yeah. And so that's what we've done and, and we've got the bill through. Yeah. Okay, do you have something in the work to show us? Yes, I do. Okay, let, let's see. Well, first of all, the bag mm. itself is made out of hemp. Um, the bag itself is made out of hemp. Out of hemp. Wow. You can't. Can, you I, can't, can I feel the Of texture? course you can. Of course mm. you can. Why not? Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. The bag itself is made is made out of hemp. People always uh, are astonished by that, but mm. they shouldn't. They shouldn't be. And and let me show you this. This is what the finished product of hemp can look like. Wow. That's hemp. Nothing to do with smoking. Everybody, mm. everybody smells it, but it doesn't smell like weed. Mm. These are some like jute sacks mm. that are on sale right now in the China Mall. Okay. So what are they used for? Well, I don't know what they're used for, mm. but I went through the China Mall mm. and, and had a look through and, and they had them there. Wow. You know? So these are all made from hemp? Yeah, all made from hemp. Mm. There's some cannabis chocolate. Okay, chocolate? Yeah. Wow. It's cannabis chocolate. I bought this at uh, Top Up Pharmacy, mm. or organic hemp protein. And that's, okay. I think that's about, it was about 300 or something. It's, it's expensive. Okay. It's expensive. Then this is uh, skin lotion. Skin lotion? Yeah, that's hemp skin lotion. Yeah. Um, not a produce of Ghana, not yet. Okay. This is body wash, hemp body wash. Body wash okay. Yeah. It's the, these are products that I use at home. Wow. Uh, I get but them sent in from the UK. So how That's effective are they? Hemp shampoo. I'm using them to bath. Well, they're, it's fine. I mean, okay. you know, I mean, mm. uh, have you ever asked yourself how effective the soap is that you use at the moment? Have you ever asked yourself the question that? You know, some of them are very peculiar. You use them and you get to know they, they work effectively. Well, they work effectively. Okay. This is a hand cream. Okay. Hemp hand cream. I bought that in Ghana as well. No. Oh. Um, I bought this in you Ghana. them in Ghana? Yeah, I bought this in Ghana. This okay. is a CBD oil. Okay. Um, this is good for epilepsy and mm. autism and all that kind mm. of stuff. Mm. This mm. is uh, over 300 Ghana. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Bought that here. 300 Ghana. They're quite expensive. They're quite expensive. Here we have some hemp soap again. Mm. Different to that. Mm. I'm sure I'll definitely get one of these. Uh, that, that, that's produced here, mm. actually. Mm. Mm. That's produced here. And I think that's all I've got in my bag of tricks wow. for today. But, you nice, know, that's nice, just some, nice, these nice. are just some of the products. Mm. Um, so everybody needs to understand we're not talking about smoking. Mm. We're talking about industry. Okay. That's what we're talking about. I think the issue about medicinal marijuana and whether people can use it for uh, adult use is mm. another conversation that we need to have. I think it's important that we focus on, on hemp uh, as an industrial product, mm. product and the yeah. byproducts that can come from it uh, and also look at the medicinal benefits as well. Um, with, with, with hemp, 
It's, like, it's environmentally friendly mm. because let's say you build a house out of hemp. It, it uh, absorbs the carbon dioxide from your car or your lawn mower or wherever it's coming from. Okay. And it holds it within the walls mm. until the temperature is cooler before releasing it back into the atmosphere. Normally, as it stands now, everything just goes into the atmosphere. You hear scientists talking about the greenhouse effect and the, the hole in the ozone layer yeah. and all these things. It's caused because of that. Yeah. So if you had communities and indeed cities where the properties were built out of uh, industrial hemp, yeah then you're going to have a much more cleaner environment. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So then how do we demystify these thoughts about the negativity surrounding Well, this? Uh, we demystify it by uh, studios like yourself mm. inviting us in mm. to talk to people about it. I think that we will also, once the lockdown is over and the restrictions on social gatherings are over, I think we also have an obligation to go to every single region sure. to hemp educate everyone about mm. uh, these products. I think mm. it's, it's vitally important. Mm. Not just these products, but about how environmentally friendly mm. hemp actually is. Because mm. where, for example, we have lands that currently cannot be used anymore um, because uh, they were mining lands, yeah? Mm. Big companies, small companies, doesn't matter if it's Gallam, say, or whoever. Whoever's been mining have left our land in a very, very bad way. Mm. And nobody cares. The farmers, there are always farmers who were there first, and then when you come to mine, you give them some money for their crop that you're going to destroy or whatever, mm. and then they go away. Okay. Now, when you go away as a miner, you leave a soil that is heavily poisoned mm. with lots of different acids and what have you. Okay. Um, and basically, no farmer can use it again. Now, if you plant hemp, if you cultivate hemp in those areas, you will eventually reclaim the land mm. because the hemp, because of its deep root system, mm. absorbs all the toxic waste and metals into the hemp itself, okay. into the leaves, mm. etc. The leaves are, are biodegradable, so the leaves will just disappear. Okay. Yeah? Okay. And at the same time, you've reclaimed the land. You won't do it in one sitting, of course. It will take several cultivations before the land is Certainly. cleaned up. But the fact of the matter is that land will be reclaimed and farmers can come there once again and utilize that land. Mm. So there, there are so many benefits. There are so Certainly. many benefits. Mm. There's health benefits, environmental benefits, and also the, the revenue that is created in taxes is an economic benefit to the government. Yeah. That is the portion whereby they can look and see that they're generating so much, they can cancel a few trips where they will go with their cap in their hand, because yeah. it's not necessary, because they've generated that revenue internally okay. through the licensing of uh, hemp farmers. Hemp, yeah, yeah, okay. You see? So they so, ought to be licensed yeah, to, to are, monitor the activity. They have to be licensed, mm, yes. Okay. Yeah, they okay. have to be licensed. So how do you intend engaging government to, to make sure this education goes down well as well as um, the registration and all well, that? Well, I, I think the, the, uh, the engagement is ongoing. It's ongoing, okay. Uh, it's ongoing. Um, I think now we have the legislative instrument mm. uh, to be pre pre prepared in draft. Okay. Um, I would anticipate that somehow uh, I would have a window of opportunity in, mm. into that okay. uh, LI for some form of consultation uh, and or contribution, um, and that we'll take it forward. We'll take it forward like mm. that. There's mm. still some mm. work mm. to be done, but I want to assure people that um, this is good for them okay. as much as it is good for me. It's mm. good for Ghana, mm. and uh, the it's things like this that the government needs to embrace if they're serious about one district, one factory. Actually. Even planting for food and jobs, this, is, this comes into mm, it, planting mm. for food and especially jobs. Especially in our villages. Yeah, especially. Mm. So, you know, any government that's really serious about the, the promises they make, about empowering our people mm. and building the capacity of our people, they need to be sitting down with the Hemp Association of mm. Ghana so that we can plan ahead five and ten years yeah. ahead down the road okay. to see how we could lift everybody up. Because, you know, one of the things that 
rang clear over this COVID-19 thing is that we learnt a very serious and important lesson. And the lesson we learnt was when we said lockdown, we didn't realise at the time that two thirds of the country mm. didn't have anywhere to lock down. So they were still out there. We understand that now, mm. but isn't that an indictment on governments now and past governments? Because where are the low cost houses? Mm. You know, where yeah. are the low cost houses that the I market agree. people and the KAA and all these people can have access to? Mm. There is none. Mm. But we've heard election after Upon election, election yeah. people yeah. talk about Housing low cost. And we're all going that. to do this. Mm. We're going to. So we're it, exposed. Yeah, mm. but it hasn't materialized. Sure. And so now we have to just go about our business as normal mm. and just hope that, you know, with the, uh, with the mask and the gloves that. You don't get anything. anything. Okay. Do you understand? Facts. But we can build a lot of low-cost housing mm -hmm. out of hemp. Oh. That's the point I'm making. Sure. It's really low-cost housing. It's affordable as well. The, the market lady can afford it. Mm. You know, and, and the carpenter can afford it. The plumber can afford it. Do you understand what I'm saying? The fitter can afford it. At the moment, what we've got, two-thirds of our society can't partake in. Mm. But with hemp, we make that possible. I think we would have to con continue this conversation another time. It was really a pleasure having you. But finally, before you take leave of us, I want you to look into this camera, yeah. talk to our people for them to get to know, indeed, the positivity associated with the decriminalization of cannabis in the country and for us to look at it from a very positive side of, of it. Yeah. Well, um, the decriminalization, indeed, the declassification is nothing new. It's something that's happened across the world. Um, it conforms to a universal standard. The THC within the hemp is 0 0.3. It can do actually absolutely nothing to anyone. And no one will attempt to smoke hemp. It's all about the industry. It's all about lifting up every single individual in Ghana. We can all play a very important role in the industrialization that we're going to go through with hemp. There are some of you that make all different kinds of things. You can make them out of hemp and it'll be cheaper and it'll be easier for you to make much more than what you make at the moment and have a much larger distribution. Medicinally, there lots of you have children who have autism and epilepsy. You've been taking certain drugs for a very long time and you can see that your child, who is now even an adult, still suffers from epilepsy. What you need is good CBD oil. It will help with the epilepsy, it will bring the seizures down and eventually control the seizures so that they don't ever happen again. There are so many people out there with high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and other degenerative diseases. What you need is real medication that comes from the cannabis plant and not what is being drummed up in the, in the science lab and being fed to you as this and that and this and that. It's not what you need. What you need is cannabis. It's good for me, it's good for the, the person who's interviewing me and it's good for all of you Ghanaians out there. So don't get caught up in the propaganda. This part of the bill that has been proposed is not dangerous at all. It's something that we must take advantage of because it can help lift us all up as individuals and in doing so help lift up Ghana as a nation. Thank you, Nana Kweku Ajaman, President of Hemp Association of Ghana. Right? That's okay, correct. it's a pleasure joining us and getting to educate us more on this. I think on a different platform we'll get to talk more on this and get to continue the education so that we wouldn't promote the negativity but get to push the positive aspect of Thank Hemp Association of Ghana. Kindly say hi to uh, Clyde Collins for me. He's, he's a colleague. He was yeah. a colleague by the guys of journalism. Okay. So hi, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> when you meet him outside. <laughs> so up next, we have um, Mohamed Taufik, who is the Partnership Director for International Center for Strategic Alliances. He will be live on Skype from UK. He's going to discuss the implications of COVID-19 on the business or banking and financial sector. So you'll be joining us. We just hope um, our, our network will not disappoint us so that we have him on Skype to discuss that. So after that, Mohammed will join us via Skype. Stay tuned.